And we welcome you inside McKee Field in Hayden Park, Oxford, Ohio, on the campus of Miami University. It is game two of this weekend set between Miami and Western Michigan on the diamond at an unusual time and an unusual day for a doubleheader in college baseball, but we'll take it. Patrick Escher, Jack Schmelzinger with you here from Oxford, Ohio, under the lights for game two of this series in a first game between Miami and Western Michigan, dominated by the Broncos. Western Michigan taking it by a 9-0 score. They were dominant in all facets of that game. We'll talk more about that later on. Our first pitch is coming up here soon. We'll quickly get through the Western Michigan lineup as they're ready to bat here for the top of the first. Will Morrison leads it off for the Broncos. Number two, he's in right field. Batting second is Connor Sharping. He's in center. It is Justin McIntyre in the third spot. He's the second baseman. At first base is Sean O'Keefe batting cleanup. Drew Devine is in the five spot in the Western Michigan lineup. He's the shortstop. You have Ethan Hadjakovic batting sixth. He's in left field. It is Josh Swinehart, the designated hitter, batting seventh. Batting eighth is Jimmy Allen. He will get the start at third base. Batting ninth is Greg Budding for the Broncos. Number 27, he will play third base for Western Michigan here in game two. Red Hawks pitcher is number 23, Jonathan Brand. One and two record through 31 innings pitched. A 4.52 ERA through 17 walks, 35 strikeouts, four home runs allowed this year for Jonathan Brand. We'll give you the Miami lineup in the next inning. As Western Michigan Jack in that first game, dominant in all areas in the 9 0 win. Absolutely. They won 9 0, like you said. The Red Hawks only managed two hits. So they're really going to have to get the bats going today if they want to have a chance in game two of this doubleheader. Yep. So Will Morrison steps in for Western Michigan. He is the leadoff hitter for the Broncos. And the first delivery to him is a fastball 94 fouled back to the screen. 370 average this year for Will Morrison. And against right, he's hitting 406. And as Jonathan Brandt is the right-handed pitcher stepping in. Next delivery is a ball down low, and it's one and one. Rocks in their red uniforms, dark red uniforms for the second game of the series. Miami across the front in white, white pants. One one, a strike right down the middle, 76, a breaking pitch there. Maybe a slider from Jonathan Brand. Moves the count to one and two against Morrison. Western Michigan in black uniforms says Broncos across the front. They have black pants on with a brown stripe down each side of the leg. One, two, outside corner, got him looking. 80 on the gun that time. Another slider looks like for Brand. First out is Will Morrison in the first. And Jonathan Brand, not the biggest guy. He's 5'9 on the mound, but he gives me a little bit of a Marcus Stroman vibe throwing really hard. 94 miles an hour, he sits with a fastball and a heavy Frisbee slider. A really good pitcher is Jonathan Brand. Just has to put it together here. Connor Sharping next hitter for Western Michigan in center field today. First pitch of fastball high, a 1 0 count. You're going to see some decent velocity from Brand. 96 on the gun that time with a fastball. Sharping this season, batting 312. 20 hits and 64 at bats. Second one is strike. Another fastball down the middle, it's 0-2. Excuse me, 1-1. One one. As the first pitch of the at-bat was high. One down here in the Western Michigan offensive half of the first inning. 1-1 one, one delivery, breaking ball, hits the strike zone. Started it high, got it low, the curveball at 75. One and two, the count as Sharping steps in for the next delivery. Brand in the windup. Fastball just missing the outside corner and it sizzled in there in 96. Sharping in center field for the second game in this doubleheader. He caught the first game, so an odd position duo you can see there. Yeah. A catcher slash center fielder, not something you see every day. 2-2 on the way. Swing and a miss, 94 mile an hour fastball right down Broadway. Two down with a couple of strikeouts here to start the first inning by the Red Hawks' Jonathan Brandt. 
Brand's one of the fieriest competitors on this uh, Red Hawks team, and you can really see it strutting around the mound, uh, excited, hyping up his teammates after that strikeout. First pitch on the way is outside, a breaking ball to Justin McIntyre. He's at second base today for Western Michigan. McIntyre himself is batting 294. Breaking ball in there for strike one inside half of the plate. McIntyre batting 68 times this season, 20 hits, 11 RBIs, 15 strikeouts. 1-1, one, one, fastball outside corner, strike two. Brand has thrown nine pitches, six of them are strikes. There's a chance here to strike out the side against McIntyre. One, two is coming. Fastball outside corner, you can hear the grunt that time. 95, he missed it. Shouldn't say outside corner, did not hit it, it was outside. These night games mess with us. Yeah, a little absolutely. Bit under the lights. It's been a long day, Patrick. <laughs> Especially for you. 2-2, two, two, swing and a miss on a high fastball of 93. And what a start Miami needed to this one. Brand strikes out the side. We head to the bottom of the first one. We return in a scoreless game. Western Michigan and Miami. This is Miami Baseball on Red Hawk Radio. Patrick Escher, Jack Spells here back with the air. Hayden Park with Keith Field under the lights in Oxford tonight. Game two of this Western Michigan and Miami series. Scoreless after our first half inning. Take a look at the Miami lineup for the second game of the series. Second game of the day. Benji Brokemont gets things going. He's the leadoff hitter in center field. Will Vogel saying at second base, bats second for Miami. The right fielder, that's Nate Stone. He bats third, hitting cleanup for the Red Hawks. Dalton back. He's in left field. Designated hitter is Cole Andrews. He'll bat fifth. Nate Stoles, the catcher, bats sixth. Batting seventh, Tyler Wardwell. He is going to be the shortstop in this game today. Brian Zapp hits eighth. He is the third baseman. And Michael Morissette bats ninth. He is the first baseman. Starting pitcher for Western Michigan, Brady Allen. Where's number 30 in black today? 0-4 record through 17 innings pitched this season, allowing 22 runs, a 7.41 ERA, 34 hits, 7 walks, 13 strikeouts this season for Brady Allen. And there is your Miami starting lineup. So offensively, Jack, things were not going well for the Red Hawks in that last game. What do you want to see out of them here in game two? Yeah, they were hitting the ball hard, especially toward the end of the game. Just need to find some outfield, I was going to say grass, but turf, really. <laughs> and uh, guys like Benji Brokeman just need to get on base, and uh, their legs will do the work. Yep. All right, so Brokeman steps in. First pitch of Miami's offensive journey today is fouled back to the screen. 90-mile-per-hour fastball. Brokeman on the season for the Red Hawks, batting 306. 26 hits and 85 at bats this season. Slower pitch for the second offering is a strike. A little curveball that time. Moving from our left to our right, sitting behind home plate. Brokeman watches it go by for strike two. 0 2 delivery. Another curveball is grounded foul, first base side. Rock's first base coach got nailed there, but appears to be okay. Caught it off the arm, moving backward away from the ball. That was. A chopper hit very strongly by Brokemont over there. That's Justin Dedman over there at first base. He's a tough guy. He'll he'll fight through this one. <laughs> oh two. Blown away. 
Looks like another breaking pitch that time off the hand of Brady Allen. Count moves to one ball and two strikes to Brokemaw the center fielder. Bases are empty, nobody out in the bottom half of the first. Western Michigan, Miami are scoreless. One, two, swing and a miss. Kind of a weak swing there. As Brokemaw couldn't quite make up his mind, he went through, but high and away fastball gets him to chase. We've had four batters in this game, all four have struck out. That's modern baseball for you, isn't it, Patrick? <laughs> Strike out, walk, or a home run basically every time. Well, Vogel's saying the next hitter for the Red Hawks at second base. First pitch is a strike to him. Fastball 91 on the outside corner. Vogel saying it's been a consistent offensive threat for the Red Hawks throughout his career. 324 average this season. 91 on the gun is right down the middle. 0 and 2 as Vogel saying watches it. And he's quickly down in the hole here with one out in the first. Allen has come out ready to go in this one too. 0 2 on the way. Fastball high at 92. 1 and 2 the count. Yeah, Allen really attacking these Red Hawk hitters. I don't think he's throwing a breaking ball yet. Nope. Just putting the fastball out there saying come hit it. And uh, through a batter and a half, they haven't been able to do that. 1 2 is high. Count moves to 2 and 2. As Vogel saying battles here against Brady Allen. Down and away on the 2-2. Two -two. It's 3-2. Miller offers. Fell back to the screen at 90. So the full count stays to Vogel saying he's battled back from 0-2 to now a full count. As Brady Miller will offer this pitch and it is low and away for ball four. Great at bat by Will Vogel saying comes back from an 0-2 count and turns it into a walk. And he's on first base with a one out in the first. And we're seeing the kind of stuff that Brady Miller has here early. He's uh, got a pretty electric fastball, but at bats like that are probably why he's struggling this year. I mean, he had Vogel saying, I believe it was 1-2, and then ended up losing him to, for the walk. Just can't have that happening uh, at this high level of baseball. Check back on Vogel saying at first base, a minor stealing threat for the Red Hawks. Can go up to eat him, too. Stole uh, stole a base earlier in the game, too. Yep. Or earlier in the day, I mean, last game. They all blend together. <laughs> yeah, they really do. First pitch is swing and a miss on an 89 mile per hour fastball down the middle to Nate Stone, the three hitter. Stone at 356 this season, batting 344 against righties. 26 hits, 20 on RBIs. 0 2 on the next offering that went down the middle. Vogel Singh taking the lead off at first. You have Stone down 0 2. Miller's pitch, a high fastball. And it's 1 and 2. Stone, the left handed batter, steps in. As Miller looks in for the sign, his wind up is fouled back to the screen. And the count stays one ball, two strikes. Finally, an off-speed pitch there from Miller. What does he do here on a one-two count to Stone? I would, get, I would guess fastball out of the zone. Here it is. Fastball out of the zone, swing and a miss. Another strikeout, two down here in the Miami half of the first inning. Wish I could have told Stone. <laughs> Should have yelled it to him. <laughs> so two outs or two strikeouts swinging for the Red Hawks here in the bottom half of the first. Cleanup man is up. That is Dalton back. He's got Vogel saying on first. 
Two down in the Miami bottom of the first inning. Vogelsang goes, the pitch is swung and missed, and he's going to slide in head first for another throw. As the catcher behind the plate in Greg Budding bobbled the throw, ball left his right hand as he was cocking his arm back to throw it to second base, so Vogelsang in there without any contest. So he's in scoring position at second. There's two down in the first, and the 0-1 offering is on the way to back. Curveball, it lobbed right over the plate. He swung and missed, it's 78. And you can see, Back has dangerous things on his mind every time he swings the bat. <laughs> yeah. Looking to put one over the fence with every swing. That time swinging for President's Hall in left field. Yeah. Just past the fence, 0-2 pitch to him. Held back to the screen, got a piece of that curveball at 79. And that time Miller wasting no time going right to the middle of the plate. Still got Vogel Singh waiting at second base. 0-2 count for back. He's fighting here with two down in the bottom of the first. Miller looks back to second, delivers. Curveball just missing outside. Started it over the middle of the plate and it broke its way outside on the right-handed hitter back. Good job by back to spit on that. Uh, early in his college career, he's been great. Discipline's been something he's had a little trouble with, so making some strides there, pretty impressive. One, two offering. High fastball at 90, two and two. Have an okay crowd for this game today. Temperatures are hovering in the mid 60s. A little bit of wind, cloud cover, but it's dark out. And the hope is that the rain trouble, which both of these teams faced a lot earlier today, is over. That's why they pushed the start from 5 o'clock originally to 9 o'clock tonight. 2-2, two -two, swing and a miss. Three strikeouts for the Red Hawks in the bottom of the first. And they leave Vogelsang stranded at second base. To the top of the second we go. Western Michigan and Miami are scoreless. This is Miami Baseball on Red Hawk Radio. Sean O'Keefe, the first baseman, steps into the box for Western Michigan. He is the cleanup hitter. We're underway here in the top half of the second inning. Patrick Esch and Jack Schmelzinger, rest of our Red Hawk radio crew behind the scenes. Win the year. Under the lights at McKee Field. First offering of the second inning is a strike right down the middle of the fastball off the hands of Jonathan Brandt. The right hand, I should say, as he faces the righty O'Keefe. Brand rushing the Miami coaches who are giving him signs. He's trying to work fast here. He's amped up. 0-1 is a breaking ball outside. Check swing did not go, says the first base up higher. And the count shifts to 1-1. One and one. As, as crazy and whatever it sounds, I feel like the lights do kind of 
pump you up a little bit? You I feel that same way. I, I feel pumped up sitting back here. <laughs> after doing the first game that lasted four hours. <laughs> One, two is the count now after that breaking ball looked at over the middle of the plate. So O'Keefe steps in here before the one-two offering. All six outs in this game so far have been strikeouts. This one outside, nice stop by Stoles behind the plate. On the breaking ball, they got a little wild there. Two and two to O'Keefe, the first baseman. 319 hitter on the season, 22 hits, 11 RBIs. Brand delivers, nice breaking ball at 74. That had all kinds of movement on it, swing and a miss. And there's a one out in the second. Batting for the Broncos, the shortstop, number three, Drew Devine. That thing had a lot of shift in its height. The ball did as it came right to the plate and trouble for O'Keefe to handle. So the next hitter for Western Michigan is Drew Devine. He'll chop this one foul first base side on the first pitch. And Brand working so quickly, you could barely even get out. Yeah. And finish talking about the last batter, and uh, Divine agrees with that. He was jawing at the umpire because Brand pitched before he was ready. Divine at shortstop today, swing and a miss on the 0-1 fastball at 96, and it was up and in out of the strike zone. Wow. <clears throat> Brand uh, has had a tough start to the season, but the stuff is there. You can tell. That's for sure. O2 on the way. Breaking ball. It's just high. It's 77. That 12 6 looking curveball again. Its movement is more up and down. 1 2. Fastball high and away. 2 and 2 2 Divine. And you get Brand, who after every pitch just kind of briefly steps off the mound behind it and then gets right back on the rubber. Marches up the hill. Looks for the sign and then just gets right in the windup. 2-2. Two -two. Breaking ball and a beautiful one right down the middle. Looked at for strike three and there's two down here in the second. For Western Michigan, the left fielder. That is strikeout number five on the day <laughs> for Brand. And he's doing his best Sam Bachman impression. We saw Bachman a couple weekends ago strike out nine in a row. We'll see how far <laughs> Brand can get. Adjikovic, next hitter for Western Lines. This one, a base hit over the jumping Will Vogel saying the second baseman heads its way into right field. That's hit number one of the day for both teams. And a single on the first pitch as Ethan Hadjikovic, the left fielder, got a hold of that one. So he is on here with two down in the top of the second. The seven hitters up in Josh Swinehart. And he is the DH for the Broncos. Righty steps in. As Hadjikovic is at first. First pitch of breaking ball in there for strike one. Swinehart steps in. A one pitch down the middle. Fastball at 93. Cal moves to 0 2. Swinehart at 474 on the year. He has nine hits and 19 at bats. Looks at an 0-2 pitch coming here. Outside and it's one and two. Fastball again from Brand. Still got Hadjikovic over there on first. You'd imagine a breaking ball on this next pitch. I would think so, yeah. And uh, Brand certainly has a good one. Yeah. High 70s curveball with a lot of movement, and he pitches it here just outside and low at 78, 2 and 2. <laughs> 2 and 2 the count, 2 down in the inning. A brand working considerably slower here after allowing the first hit last at bat to Hadjikovic. What a fastball there, 94, swing and a miss. That's K number 6. On the day for Jonathan Brand ends the Western Michigan offensive half of the second. We'll go to the bottom half of the second. Still scoreless. 
in between Miami and the Broncos. We're back in a moment. This is Miami Baseball on West on Red Hawk Radio. Cole Andrews is the next hitter for the Red Hawks in the bottom half of the second. He is the DH today in the five spot for Miami. And he'll step in to face Brady Miller in his second inning of work. This is a high fly ball lifted to center field, sending Sharping back to the wall, and he'll make the catch of the track. Plenty of room actually for Sharping standing on the dirt near the 400 side out there and just about dead center. And a fly out on the first pitch for Cole Andrews is out number one in the second. You don't really realize quite how deep center field is here at McKee until you see a deep fly ball like that chase a guy back about 50 feet and he's not even yeah. at the warning track. So one out, first pitch on the way is high and in to the next Miami hitter and Nate Stoll is the catcher. Yeah, Miller also working quickly here in the second. This one hits the outside corner, 77 mile per hour curveball moving to our left, to our right, to the right-handed hitting Stoles. We're behind the plate, Stoles gets a hold of this one, a shallow center field, sharpening plenty of room to make the catch. And he's there in time for round number two. And these outfielders are probably pretty, pretty happy that there's no sun to deal with uh, yeah. out here. We saw, I think, Three errors last game due to the sun. Yep. Except for us, we got to figure out where that ball's going. It's yeah. losing the lights. Next hitter, Tyler Wardwell. We'll have to send our complaint to the yeah. governing body. Like they would listen to us. First <laughs> pitch is a strike. Fastball down the middle for a Miller. Wardwell at shortstop today. Next offering, down and in, 80 mile per hour, maybe a slider or something that time is gonna get the count to one and one. Miller to the right, he steps in to deliver to the lefty. Beautiful curveball there, just missing high and away. And it's two, one and two, or two and one rather. Scoreboard guy was sleeping there. And I'm going to say this quietly, but I think I might have just seen some lightning out in left field. <laughs> Swing and a miss on the 89 mile per hour fastball. Delivered in there to Wardwell. Looks like no one else noticed it, so we're good. No, they're just playing with the uh, pyrotechnics right, down at Yale right, right. for football season. Two and two is outside. Little check swing was. Not even worth an appeal that time from Wardwell. Three and two the count, two down here in the Miami bottom of the second inning. Nobody's on base in a scoreless game, two in the series with Western Michigan. Full count pitch, looked at for strike three. I think a fastball that time at 86. Another strikeout retires the Miami side here in the second. Jack Schmelzer takes over play-by-play -play when we go to the third. Coming up, no score, Miami and Western Michigan. This. Is Miami Baseball on Red Hawk Radio.
change of plans. I'll do the play-by-play. -play. Jack's struggling a little bit of uh, broadcaster laryngitis here, so we start the third inning. And the first delivery to the next Western Michigan hitter. As that is Jimmy Allen is ball one and it's low. Allen is in the eighth spot today for the Broncos. D8, or excuse me, at third base. 1-0 is fouled back. First base side out of play, and that's in the parking lot. I, I yelled myself a little bit horse game one, so I'm going to stick with <laughs> color. Patrick was gener generous enough to share his cough drops, though, so I should be good soon. Yeah, well, hopefully. 1-1 one, one is a strike. Curve ball at 75. It's 1-2. and two. Good thing I could do this game with you because you'd be struggling right now. I would By be. yourself. I don't think anyone would probably have zero viewers. 1-2 <laughs> two is high, and it's 2-2 two and two and 94. Glad you're with us. Wherever you may be listening from tonight. As this 9 o'clock game was the new time after all this rain came through in the late afternoon, early evening to Oxford. Delayed the first game a little bit and pushed back the start of the second game. 91 on the gun. That time a fastball off the hands of Brand and it misses outside 3-2. and two. So that is the full count to Jimmy Allen. Here comes the offering. Line back foul, first base side of a play. And we'll do it again, three and two. Bases are empty, nobody out in the top of the third. Fouled back right on near the handle of the bat. Got a piece of that, Allen did, and sent it back to the screen. Thirty-first pitch of the outing here for Brand, and it's high on the curveball, just missing for ball four. We'll send Allen to first base with nobody out here in the third, and the nine hitters up in Greg Budding for the Broncos. Decent leadoff by Allen over there at first. Bunting shows, Bunt pulls it back in a high fastball at 91. So your count is 1-0. and Bunting taking his time, adjusting the batting glove, stretching out, steps into the box. Maybe trying to slow Brand down a little bit. Yeah. We've been talking the whole broadcast about how quickly he's working. 1-0 pitch, showing Bunt, that was close to his head. 2-0 as he pulled it back just in time. But Bunting, as he was kind of kneeling down there a little bit low, showing Bunt. Almost <laughs> clipped his head. It was right at that level. Yeah, that's got to be scary. I wouldn't wish that upon my worst enemy. A uh, 94 mile or Jonathan Brand fastball pouring in on your face. Shows Bunt again. 2-0, it's low and away. 3-0. So what do you do if you're butting here? You just take it, I bet, with already a runner on first from a walk. And Jimmy Allen to start this third inning. Yeah, hard to imagine they'll give him the green light. I think he's hitting below 200 on the year. 3-0 is a strike. And it's 3-1 and one, right down the middle. So Buddy did take it. And if you're Jonathan Brand, you do not want to walk the nine better. Especially when that guy's a backup catcher. Right. Buddy is behind the plate for this game. Shows Bunt again. Fastball high as he pulled it back at 91. Two walks to start the third from Miller. And they're on first and second with nobody out in the third. Back to the top of the order we go. And Morrison, the last time up, struck out looking. In fact, the first five Western Michigan hitters in the lineup, their last time up, struck out. In some way, as Brand is up to, it says four Ks on the day. That's incorrect. He actually, by my count, has six. Mm -hmm. So you got Morrison in there with runners on first and second. He will get down a butt right back to the pitcher. It's fielded by Brand, a clean throw to first. They get the out there. Runners moving to second and third. 
You got Allen on third, Budding on second. There's one out as Western Michigan threatens here in the third inning. You got the two hitter up and Connor Sharping, also a strikeout for him last time up. Sharping showed in game one, he's dangerous though, hit a uh, absolute bomb off the scoreboard in left center here at McKee Field. So definitely gonna wanna be careful with him is Jonathan Brand, and we'll see if they pitch around him with the base open. Sharping batting 308 on the year, slugging 385. First offer into him, breaking ball looked at for strike one at 77. And the guy behind him, McIntyre, also homered last game, so I guess scratch that uh, pitching around him idea. Oh one one shows butt, and that was a strike anyway as the bat remained extended over the plate when the pitch came through. It's 0-2 to Sharping. One down in the top of the third. They're on second day and third base. No score, Miami and Western Michigan. This is the best chance Paracas have had in this game to threaten offensively. This is a pitch that gets well away from Stoles. Coming in to score easily is Allen. And it's 1-0 on the wild pitch that time that Stoles had trouble handling. It went away from him toward the first base side right in front of the Western Michigan dugout. And Allen coming in to score from third base without opposition. Broncos take the 1-0 lead, and you got Budding who moves up to third base in the play. So he's the only base runner. The count moves to 1-2 and two to Sharping. And there's a one down in the third as the Broncos break the ice. On oh, that pitch, there's a breaking ball. And just bounced in front of Stoles, deflected off his body to the Western Michigan dugout. Swing and a miss on the one-two pitch. Fastball that time will send Sharping to the dugout for his second K of the day. And that's two outs here in the third now as McIntyre arrives to the plate. And he'll take the pitch for a strike. One one to count, you still got Budding at third. He's the only runner on, two down here. A one, a simmering fastball just outside at 94. One and one. One one offering, outside. Fastball at 90, still does a good job to get in front of that as it was at about the halfway point of the left-handed batter's box. McIntyre in there now, he's a right-handed hitter, so it's pretty far away from him. Two and one, the count goes. Brand in the windup, curveball, strike two. As McIntyre watched it go by, plays beautifully there at 75 miles per hour in the outside corner. So now the count is two and two. McIntyre steps in, brand the sign, winds up, delivers. Outside of the fastball, sent Stoles to his right. Count is full. Two down here in the third. Full count pitch, breaking ball outside. Gets away from Stoles, he can't track it down. And coming in for a third to score is Budding with a head first slide. Two nothing Broncos as Stoles that time got to the ball as it trickled away from him up the first base side. But when he picked it up trying to throw to Brand coming in, the pitcher attempting to get to the plate for the play. Stoles bobbled it in his right arm and dropped it. Therefore, no throw. It is a walk, a stolen base for a run. Two nothing Broncos. And the inning continues as McIntyre moves to first. He's the only base runner now. First pitch is a fastball for a strike to the new Western Michigan hitter. And Sean O'Keefe, the cleanup man. And Patrick, never a good thing to have more runs on the board than uh, hits. No. Broncos, two runs, one hit right now. Two runs on two wild pitches. 
Next pitch is in there for strike two at 92. Fastball right down Broadway. You say they're wild pitches or pass balls, these two cases? I would call both wild pitches. Okay. That's what I would think. Because I know people get pretty opinionated about the mm -hmm. difference. Don't want to offend anybody That's for here. Sure. Breaking ball outside, it's one and two. Purposely going away that time, it's 77 on the gun. McIntyre's at first, two outs in the Western Michigan offensive half, top of the third here. As Brand steers down O'Keefe from the rubber, about to deliver the one two. Chopper, right side of the infield, right back to Brand, moves to his left, the flip to first. They got him. It ends this disastrous third inning for the Red Hawks. Allowed two runs on two wild pitches. And the Broncos take a 2 0 lead to the bottom half of the third. That's coming up when we return. You're listening to Miami Baseball on Red Hawk Radio. Brian Zapp arrives to the plate for the Red Hawks as they will get offense going here, or at least try to in the bottom half of the third inning. And the lefty steps in, Brian Zapp does for his first at bat of the day in the third spot, or I should say at bat of the second game. He'll get a hold of this fastball, flip it out to right field. He got the center fielder, the right fielder coming in and in. Right center, the catch is made by Sharping. Near the warning track, not quite there, as a nice solid hit off the bat of Zap, just shy of the wall. There's a one out in the third. And probably the hardest contact we've seen all day from the Red Hawks, so a good sign. Maybe they're timing up this, uh, timing up Miller a little bit. Yep. Michael Morris set is the new hitter for the Red Hawks. At first base in the nine spot. First pitch is low. Fastball that time to the left-handed hitter in Morissette. So one out here in the bottom of the third. Broncos up 2-0. Bases are empty. Next offering is outside 2-0. Oh. You got Miller's working on the mound for Western progressively quicker. It seems like as this game has gone on. 3-0 oh on the way already. Or 2-0 oh rather. This was the count. And the count was to 2-1 as Morissette. Looks at a strike down the middle. Miller's 2-1, hits him. Curveball that already started left. Now they're coming out saying Morissette leaned into it. I guess that is what they're going to say, yeah. Home plate umpire immediately came out and did some hand signals. And Morissette is going to come back and continue the at-bat. It did hit him on the knee. It clearly did hit him. I don't know if the umpire is saying that it did not hit him or he leaned into it. And I think based on body language right now, he's, the umpire is trying to indicate that Morissette extended his knee on purpose to purposely get hit with a pitch. Yeah, they're going to say he leaned into it, and I think that's a little ridiculous. I think they call that way too much in college baseball. I mean, if the pitcher... If the pitcher can't keep control of the pitch and it goes to you, it, it shouldn't be on you to have to get out of the way. 
3-1 is outside, so it doesn't matter anyway. It's a walk for Morissette, who will reach first base on the at-bat. And he's on with one out in the third inning. Here comes Benji Brokemont, who struck out swinging his first time up. Back to the top of the order we go. Morissette is the second walk of the day allowed by Miller. Bunt gets down, third base, but coming in, that is Allen. The throw across the diamond gets the fast runner there, and Benji Brokemont for out number two, and they will get Morissette over to second. Good job there by Allen coming in to kind of barehand that ball a little bit, fired across the infield. We got rain coming in, Jack. Rain, you said? Yes. Light shower coming through. Umbrellas going up. This crowd has dealt with a lot of rain today through this doubleheader. They're going to deal with more rain tomorrow, whether they like it or not. Yep. First pitch of Olase popped up behind the plate, and this one will end up just to the right of us out of play. There's people here running for cover. It's a light shower coming through. A peek at the radar here after this pitch. It's an 0-1 to Vogelsang. The two hitter day for Miami. Break it ball outside. Turns the count to one and one. You do have Morissette at second. Now this might last a little while. Like to hear that. It's just a moderate rain, hopefully no lightning involved, but it's gonna be a solid, I don't know, 20 minutes. Bunt is down to the pitcher, fielding it there is Miller. Beautiful play, go to first, and they beat Vogel saying by a stride. Trying to surprise him there, doesn't work. Red Ox leave a man stranded in their half of the third. It's a two-nothing game. We go to the fourth after this. You're listening to Miami Baseball on Red Hawk Radio. Patrick Ketch and Jack Schmelzinger back with you here from McKee Field at Hayden Park in Oxford. Fourth inning about to start. We have rain and a steady shower coming through the area, so we'll just play through it. First pitch is swing and a miss on the way there to the Western Michigan hitter to lead off this fourth inning. And that would be Devine, Drew Devine, the five spot hitter. 0-1 pitch, so in a miss, 0-2. Breaking ball at 75. So coming out for his fourth inning of work is Brand. That was his 57th pitch of the outing, 32 strikes on the day for him. 0-2 to Devine. Left field, it's a high fly ball. Right into the reins there of back. He's gonna move over to his left, make the catch. On the routine fly ball, one out in the fourth. Coming to the plate for Western Michigan, number 25, Ethan Kadikovich. 
So the rain continues to come down. It's a pretty moderate rainfall. There's no lightning or thunder, thank God. So we're just going to play through it. So they did have, of course, a rain delay in the first game of this series. And then second game pushed back in this doubleheader Friday for more rain that came through in the 7 and 8 o'clock hours. Adjakovic is up for Western. He's the six hitter today. Got a single last time up. Swings and misses at the first offering. Second offering is a ball inside at 92 on the fastball. Here comes the wind. Flag at center field, blowing pretty hard out toward right. 1-1, one, one. fouled back third base side of the play. It's 1-2. and two. A lot of umbrellas are up here. Some fan just sitting through it. That's a hardcore baseball fan right there. Absolutely. I'm sure a lot of these parents have sat through weather just like this a long time. Watching their kids play. And loved every second of it. Of course. One, two outside on the curveball. It's two and two. 78 on the gun that time from Jonathan Brand, that was his 60th pitch of the day. As we're in the fourth. Somewhat efficient, swing and a miss. On the 2-2, striking out is Hadjikovic. That's out number two of the fourth. So Josh Schweinhardt is up as Hadjikovic is the seventh strikeout victim of the day for Brand. Bases empty, two out in the fourth. First pitch, a lobbing curveball that's inside. It's 73 for ball one. Game is about 51 minutes long or so. Here in the top of the fourth. This next pitch, a breaking ball low, and it's 2-0. Swing and a miss on the 2 0. Oh, it's 2 and 1. And Swinehart chasing that off speed. Two, one. Outside, three and one. Another fastball at 91. It was a little low, too. You got Brand, who is working considerably more quickly here in the fourth as he has the previous inning or two. He's working extremely fast. Back in the first, kind of more up to that speed now. 3-1 is fouled back to the screen. 3-2 and two on the fastball at 90. And it's interesting when you uh, when he's working really fast, he's throwing all fastballs. Yep. When he slows down a little bit, he mixes in the breaking ball. So I uh, hope he's not tipping his pitches at all here. 3-2 pitch. Curveball, swing and a miss. And Swinehart was out in front of that one. Beautiful pitch there, and Brand happy to go inside and get some dry clothes after pitching in the rain. We are through three and a half here at Oxford. Two nothing, Broncos on top of Miami. We're back in a moment. This is Miami Baseball on Red Hawk Radio.
Starting the fourth inning here in Oxford, the bottom half of it. Red Hawks trying to bat their way out of this 2-0 deficit against Western Michigan. Patrick Getsch and Jack Schmelzinger with you here. McKean Field and Hayden Park it continues to rain. As the first here for Miami, a foul ball third base side and a play goes off the bat of Nate Stone. Stone struck out swinging his last time up. They'll dig in here. Here comes the pitch, blowing inside, and it is one and one on the off speed there at 79. Still out there for his fourth inning of work for Western is Brady Miller. One one, outside, two and one. Another fastball. Rain coming down a little bit harder now. This one fouled back, third base side on a play. Two and two. Here it comes. Oh yeah. That's the yellow that we saw on the radar. <laughs> and uh, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but there was a good amount of it. Looks like we'll just keep playing here until with the turf field until uh, maybe lightning comes through. High and away on the two and two, turns into three and two, fastball at 89. That time from Miller. And the turf won't get soggy like dirt, but it will get slick. Swing and a miss on the three and two at 89. Fastball that was kind of low, maybe in the zone. And that is out number one here, the Miami offensive half of the fourth. Thank God we have a 10. Yeah. New hitters back. First pitch is high. Fastball at 84. So now you're going to see velocities going down. And you're going to see possibly some grips slip up too. This is a line shot to right field, sending the right fielder over his head. That's Morrison heading for second with a stand up double is back. As Morrison went back to the wall and fetched the ball, got it into the infield quickly. But through the rain, Dalton back, the cleanup man lines that one over Morrison's head and right. First Miami hit of the day, puts a man in scoring position with one out in the fourth. And they're lucky that one got over the wall because uh, that one might have bounced around, around the wall yep. uh, a little while and Beck is a, an athletic player, could have run for a while. And talk about being pumped up, Patrick, in the rain <laughs> at night with 50 Cent playing. Cole Andrews walking up. Everybody's out in it, too. All the players are. Absolutely. Because, you know, they could be in their dugout yeah. dry, but they're all out in the rain. I love it. One out here in the fourth. Andrews is up. First pitch, breaking ball down the middle at 72. Andrews in the five spot for Miami. Flew out his last time up. A one offering here, you got a pretty decent leadoff over there at second base. They're not worried about back though, as this one fell back to the Miami dugout, third base side and out of play by Andrews. Count moves to 0-2. Did no. Decent chance here for the Red Hots with back standing at second base, one out. Here comes the pitch. High fly ball, right center field. This end sharping back to the wall. It's gone. Two run bomb through the rain. Off the hands of Cole Andrews. This game is tied on the two run shot in the fourth. The 50 cent effect, Patrick. That's <laughs> what I'm telling you. Andrews got a hold of that one and threw it over the right center field wall near the 400 sign. Red Hawks going nuts coming out of the dugout. First bomb of the year for Andrews. Ties the game at two and what has been an anemic offensive day for the Red Hawks. And can they possibly get some momentum from that? You got Stoles the catcher up now, the six hitter. First pitch is strike. Andrew, or Stoles rather, flew out his 
First time up. 0-1 is outside of the breaking ball. It's one and one. One one pitch. Got a hold of that one, but it's well out of play and foul third base side. Brock is tracking over there, but that's they have no shot at that. It's off the batting cage building out there in left field. Rain continues to come down at a moderate speed. This is no little sprinkle, it's it's rain. And if the rest of the weekend's forecast didn't look so ugly, I wouldn't be surprised if they were uh, postponing this one. Yeah. Not looking like we're gonna have a respite. Pitches outside, two and two to Stoles. You got tomorrow, just one game. Tomorrow was supposed to be the doubleheader, but they moved the doubleheader to today. Still rain trouble today, tomorrow. An even better chance of consistent rain, especially in the afternoon with the one o'clock start plan. Outside at three and two, breaking ball that time. And I think Miller kind of lost control of it as he came out of his arm. And Patrick, you'll be glad to hear game one, I was the only one who remained outside during that torrential downpour. And I actually really? took my sweatshirt off, covered up the equipment. <laughs> three, two, foul ball, first base side, trying to battle the ring as the first baseman in O'Keefe. And he makes the catch. Nice job there by Sean O'Keefe, trying to look up in the rain, make that catch, was successful. And there's two down here in the fourth. You got Wardwell stepping up to the plate here for the Red Hawks. He is the shortstop and the seven hitter today. There's a strike. 0-1. Two two game, Miami and Western Michigan tied in this inning from the Andrews two run shot. Next pitch is outside. It's one and one as Wardwell watches that go by on the fast ball off the hands of Miller. Miller's next delivery comes almost instantaneously. It's two and one inside breaking ball. Two outs, bases empty here in the fourth, and the rain is letting up just a little bit. That's a strike. And it's two and two, fastball down the middle. I think the rain's over now. Nope, just a little sprinkle, but heavy stuff should be over, let's hope. Don't get ahead of yourself, Patrick. We, uh, <laughs> Oxford weather throwing a lot of curveballs today, no pun intended. Out back to the screen, three and two. Yeah, now it's picking up, jinxed it. <laughs> two and two, here's the pitch. This one, a line shot, it's well foul now to play. First base side of Wardwell. That'll bounce off a car or two in the parking lot. No baseball parents though, they all know to park far away. Yeah, that's why the best parking real estate at this field is not even close to the <laughs> first base line. Two, two, it's low on the fastball, three and two. Miller a lot more inaccurate these last few pitches. That's obviously the rain, I can imagine, the, the grip on the ball. Yeah, it's got to be tough to be pitching. I really don't envy either of these pitchers no. here with all this water coming down. 3-2. Check swing, and they got him. Wardwell kind of stopped three quarters of the way through, but it's too late on the breaking ball at 88, or excuse me, 78. And that will retire the side here in the fourth. But the Red Hawks do tie the game at two. Cole Andrews. Two run shot here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. That's where we stand, headed to the fifth. Well, that is coming up next. You're listening to Miami Baseball right here on Red Hawk Radio.
All right, top of the fifth, about to start in the seventh inning affair because the doubleheader from Oxford. First pitch line over the head of the second baseman, Bola Singh in right field. That came off the bat of Jimmy Allen. First pitch of the fifth is the second Western Michigan hit of the day, and he's on first with nobody out in the fifth. That one almost jumped over Nate Stone's head in the right field and uh, would have chased him back to the wall and probably could have gone pretty far. Right. Pretty far around the bases, could Allen. Next hitter is Buttig for Western Michigan. That's Greg Buttig, the nine hitter. Shows a bunt, it's popped up behind the plate, but not in time for Stoles to get over there. And the count at 0-1. Looks like they really don't trust Buttig much with the bat in his hands. I think he's had two at bats so far and uh, <laughs> squared around a bunt, right. both of them. Staring in his brand, no one on the way. You get Allen over there on first. This is high. It is brought down by Stoles. Fires over to first. Is thinking about stealing there. He's kind of halfway between first and second almost was Allen. Able to dive back to first in time. I think he felt that Stoles was bobbling the ball there a little bit, which he did, but able to regain control. Allen back to first in time after the throw down. And one won the count as Brand will deliver the next one. It's another bunt, this time popped up well high behind the plate and off the screen. And Buttig effectively takes two strikes out in the backyard and sets them on fire there <laughs> with the two failed bunt attempts. Yeah. Can't bunt anymore for a try to. One and two, that'd be gutsy, <laughs> nobody out. Man on first here in the fifth. Man on first is Allen, one, two. From the stretch, breaking ball outside, and Stoles, who had trouble with that kind of pitch that he had a block, that was wide on a right-handed hitter. I'm gonna stop that one, count it two and two. Hunter stays at first base. Brand sets up, from the stretch will fire another one, that's low and away. Stop by Stoles, a 76 mile per hour breaking ball. And two straight where he's either purposely throwing it low or just the grip again with the wet rain coming down. Three two on the way with Allen standing there at first. Swing and a miss. Fastball at 91, maybe a little high. It gets the job done on Bunning. Strikeout number 10 on the day for Brandt. I'd say that's pretty impressive. Yeah. 10 strikeouts and four and a third innings. He's allowed two hits, two runs, no errors. Two runs that came on wild pitches and stolen bases, but other than that, very efficient has been Brandt. Morrison, the next hitter, back to the top of the order. The Broncos go and he'll foul that one a grounder at third base side. And 0 1 goes to count to Will Morrison. Sack punt, strikeout looking in his prior two appearances in this one. Still got Allen over there on first with one out in the Western Michigan offensive half of the fifth. Rain continues to come down at a steady pace. You may hear it. 0 1, fastball, line foul, first base side and out. Is 0 and 2. Allen takes his lead off. Brand really taking his time until he pitches now. 0 2 is up and in. Fastball at 91, and it's 1 and 2. For the record, no action in either bullpen at the moment. Morrison.
Marston taps the plate twice, gets the bat behind the back. One, two on the way. Swing and a miss. 92 on the gun, the fastball down the middle. Two down here in the 11th. Drank out of the day for Brand. Comes in the top of the fifth inning. And Brand has registered, uh, I believe it's 14 outs if my math is correct. Yeah. So, striking guys out at a pretty ridiculous clip so far. Two down to the fifth. Sharping is next. Two hitter of the day for Western Michigan in center field. Still got Allen over there on first. And the opening pitch to the at bat is fouled near the Western Michigan dugout on the ground for strike one. So Brand is really taking his time here these last few batters, trying to get a good grip on the ball before pitching. Check over to first, diving back safely is Allen. Here comes the OO. Up it in. One and oh. To Sharping. Two runs, two hits for Western Michigan. No errors. Red Ox the same. It's a tie game here in the top half of the fifth inning in the rain. Under the lights at McKee Field. Brand won the 1-1. Nice curveball right down the middle. 75 or strike two. One and two with two down to Sharping. And Brand will deliver his 83rd of the outing this next pitch. Looks at his left forearm standing there on the rubber. Now he'll get his feet set. And Sharping goes through his pre-pitch routine. One, two. So he had a miss, strike three, got him. And that ends the inning. Top of the fifth is over. We remain tied at two as the Broncos strand a man at first and Allen to the bottom of the fifth we go. Red Hawks try to extend, and maybe get a lead here in this tie game. We're back in a moment, Miami Baseball on Red Hawk Radio. Number six for Miami will lead things off. The eight hitter in the bottom half of the fifth. That's Brian Zapp, flew out his last time up. And hits the plate for the second time in this one. Two two year score between Miami and Western Michigan. First pitch is high and away as so you got Miller still out there for his fifth inning of work. Miller is at 67 pitches on the outing. 1-0, oh, another high and away at 88 for ball two. It's 2-0. Two oh. a, a pretty efficient first uh, four innings for Miller, for that's no. for sure. Strike one, it's 2-1. and one. Low pitch that time off speed for a Miller. So you get Zap, Morissette, Brokemon are due up. 
This one line through the gap, right side of the infield on the ground for a base hit into right field. And reaching with the single is Zap for the third Miami hit of the day. That's the way to get things started here in the fifth for the Red Hawks offensively. Morissette is up next, the nine hitter, who walked his last time up. He was part of that hit by a pitch controversy when he got called for leaning into a pitch. Lefty steps in, man on first, high game at two, nobody out here in the fifth. Miller winds up. Morissette showed bunt, low pitch, pulled it back, it's one and oh. 86 mile per hour, probably a fastball that time from Miller. Rain continues, umbrellas are still out in Oxford. Check over to first, back in time is Zap. One of offering is upcoming here to Morissette. Another check over to first. Nothing there. So the rain has been steady for a good half hour now. It's just been between moderate rain and light rain. Bunt goes to the first base line and feeling it there was Miller. He's in kind of as stepping down the line as Morissette. He's called out as Zap or excuse me, Miller, the pitcher, never tagged him. So the bunt went down the first baseline. Miller came over the pitcher. He fielded it and beat basically Morissette to that part of the first baseline. So Morissette just kept walking backwards before Miller could give him the tag. And actually the umpire just called him out. So moving over to second, it's a successful sack bunt. His zap. So he's in scoring position with one out in the fifth. Wouldn't be surprised to see uh, Brokemont throwing down here too. And Brookmon is up as we're back to the top of the order. First pitch down the middle. Excuse me, just outside at 86. One and on a fastball. Look down the middle to me too, but I yeah. won't say that too loudly. So the runner at second is Zap. He's in scoring position. The go ahead run in the fifth inning. Outside gets past the catcher. Zap will move over to third base without a throw. As Budding that time, the ball bounced in front of him. I think it was a breaking ball that came in from Miller and got past the catcher in Budding, allowing Zap to move to third. He's 90 feet away. Sack situation here with one out in the fifth inning. And this 2 2 tie game. 2-0 pitch, swing and a miss, fastball at 88, outside corner. 2-1 to Broke Bond. Western infield in here trying to cut off the run. All Brokeman has to do is put a hard ground ball pretty much anywhere other than right at the infield to score the run. Foul tipped in the mid on the 2-1, two it's 2-2. Two two. Another fastball outside half the plate. Brokemon just getting a piece of that. And Miller about to deliver the 74th pitch of the outing here. Big one to Brokemon at two and two. He'll step off the rubber momentarily, kind of reset. Man on third with one out in Zap. And that is the go ahead and run. Two, two, looked at just outside on the fastball at 93 and two. In Little League, they'd be yelling at Brookmont, good eye. 3-2 offering coming his way. One out in the fifth. Here it is. Line right side. It is a fair ball, and off the wall it goes. Brookmont is going to move to second. They're going to wave him to third as the run comes in, and Benji Brookmont will go head first and beat the throw for a triple. 3-2 Red Hawks as Zap comes in to score on the play. It broke one, got a hold of that one right on the full count offering. Put it on the correct side of the foul line. And he slid into third base head first with a triple in plenty of time. Red Hawks take the lead, their first lead of the day in both games. And I said it in game one, I'll say it again. Red Hawk fans have a lot to look forward to. Benji Brokemont, Dalton back, Nate Stone, all freshmen. These guys are gonna be uh, 
pinballs hard in Oxford for the next few years to come. Yeah. They're going to peel over to second base, actually. I'm kind of confused what they're doing here. The pitcher. Well, the pitcher has to get back on the mound before okay. he appeals back and I guess has to get set and step off. And, yeah, now, I, now I'm confused, too. I don't know. He did that about three or four times, yeah, but never did throw it over to second. Miller didn't. And now he does. Now he throws over to second base, and they say safe. Huh. One of those weird archaic baseball things, I guess. Now we got Western Michigan coach. We're going to have pitch a change here for the Broncos. As looks like Miller's night is done after allowing that go-ahead triple to Brokemon. They gave the Red Hawks the 3-2 lead, and it looks like number 22 is in for Western Michigan from the bullpen. That would be Will Mullen, the righty, out of Rochester, Michigan, and he will step in as the night is over for Brandon Miller, or Brady Miller, excuse me, after pitching four and a third, allowing four hits on the day and three runs. We'll step aside, pitching change at Oxford. On our way when we return, 3-2 Red Hawks. This is Miami Baseball on Red Hawk Radio. We are ready to go here after the pitching change to the bottom of the fifth. Will Vogel saying is the new hitter. You got Will Mullen out there on the mound for Western Michigan. He's number 22. Get you his numbers here after this first offering to Vogel saying he's a sidearm righty. Line to short. They're going to go home for the play as the runner came in and broke on, and they'll tag him out. So the Red Hawks there trying to be aggressive, sneak the run in. But the throw home from the shortstop to Vine gets the out at the plate. And the score remains three to two. Two down here in the fifth. Runner in Vogel saying moves to first base and the fielder's choice. Yeah, and probably the right to play there by Brokham on to break for home. I mean, took a perfect throw, right. perfect tag, and uh, Western Michigan, you got it. Next hitter for the Red Hawks in the three hole. Here is Nate Stone. Two strikeouts in the day for him. First one is low. Four ball one. So Mullen, the pitcher now is a senior, 6'4", 220, Rochester, Michigan. Played his high school ball at Notre Dame Prep. 1-0 pitch coming. Looked at for strike one in the outside corner by Stone. Career ERA of Mullen is 4.31, 2.25 on this season. He's 1-0, nine appearances this year. This is his 10th. Did make a start this year, 20 innings pitch, 16 hits. Eight runs, 11 walks, 15 strikeouts. Says the check over to first, does nothing for the Broncos. Volgo saying he's back in time. A little off topic, Patrick, but I think there's a Notre Dame prep in just about every major city. Yeah, some sort of prep. Check over to oh. first, they picked him off. What a throw there by Mullen. Caught Vogel saying off guard, he had a pretty healthy lead off. 
And the Red Hawks weave him on base. Or I, I don't know statistically that works, but he is the third out here of the fifth inning in this three to two ball game. Red Hawks do take the lead here in the fifth. Kind of a sour end to it, but they do get the run. And it is a 3-2 Miami lead after five to the six we go. Western Michigan will try to respond. This is Miami Baseball on Red Hawk. Brand is to the plate, or to the mound rather. Oh, excuse me, Jonathan Brand is to the mound, to the plate for Western Michigan. We got a pinch hitter, I believe, or no, he had some defensive changes for Miami. Danny Hayden just came out to the umpire. We might have a new center fielder out there. And it looks like coming out of the dugout here for the Red Hawks is number 27. Parker Massman, I believe. It is Parker Massman. So what's going to happen? Massman takes over at right field. You have the right fielder Stone going over to the left, and looks like back is going to come out. Yeah, and uh, back, back a freshman, a catcher by trade. So a little inexperienced out in left field. They're going to opt for the uh, better defensive player mm -hmm. to win the game. <coughs> So to the plate is McIntyre here, third hitter for Western Michigan. First pitch is low. So it is Jonathan Brandt still out there on the mound for the Red Hawks, the starter. Pitch count now to 87. As we start the top of the six, sharp liner, third base, the flex off of the glove of Zapp and into left field for a base hit. Wardwell did come in to kind of stop that in shallow left field, the shortstop, but very tough one to handle there for Zapp, a sharp liner that went right off his glove after coming off the turf and bounced behind him to the outfield. That's an E5, they call it. So first Red Hawk error of the day. And a leadoff runner is on base for Western Michigan. O'Keefe, the next man up the five hitter today. And he will take this one for ball one. It's kind of surprising. Right to me that uh, offensive or defensive rather substitution, and it was like right before the pitch is about to be thrown. It's kind of late. Yeah. Pitch by Brand is there on the outside corner. <coughs> Patrick Etch and Jack Schmelzinger here trying to make it through this double header. We've not really had enough cough drops to get through it. At least Jack has it. Still a little bit hoarse. Glad you're with us wherever you may be listening from tonight. The 1-1 one -one pitch is a strike and it's 1-2. and two. Inside curveball that time hit the inside corner. I'll be good for tomorrow's game though, Patrick. I'll have some tea when I'm I get excited. home. I'm excited. And Chris Finnell was with you for tomorrow. Can't wait. He'll be making his season debut on Red Hawk Radio. 2-2 two two is the pitch outside. Still got McIntyre over there at first for Western Michigan. 
There'll be two baseball nerds on the broadcast tomorrow, you and Chris. <laughs> and uh, back with you on Sunday for the fourth game of the series, barring any schedule changes tomorrow. This one outside, it's three and two. That might be the nicest thing you've ever said to me, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> What, that you're a baseball nerd? Oh, yeah, I take that is, a, that is an <laughs> absolute compliment. A lot of pride in that, huh? I'm sure Chris would say the same. Yeah. That guy knows any Cincinnati Reds stat or fact you want to know. He's got it in his head. Check over to first, three and two. Count still. Check over does nothing. Is McIntyre over there. And you're not absolved. I've heard you uh, talk about, I've heard you talk about Miami hockey, Bruins hockey. Or walking encyclopedia that, well, yourself. That applies to me, but not for baseball. So I miss. Strikeout will keep down on K's. That's K number 13 on the day for Brand. One out in the sixth. Coming to the plate for Western Michigan. Number three, Brand came in with 35 strikeouts on the season through 31 innings, so he is a high strikeout pitcher by trade. But today really going off in that department. And... Get Devine up there now, O'Keefe, with his second strikeout of the day in the last at bat. So Devine will take this curveball at 75 down the middle, and it's 0 1 on the strike. Still got McIntyre over at first, one out in the Western Michigan offensive half of the sixth. 3 to 2, Red Hawks lead it. They lead the hits 4 to 2 as well. Miami was down 2 0 at one point in this game. They've come back, scored 2 in the fourth, 1 in the fifth. We're in the top of the six now, and that pitch outside, one and one. And after the uh, NIU series a couple weekends ago, I, I started calling them the Cardiac Hawks. Came from behind three times <laughs> in that series, two walk-offs. So they don't like to make it easy, but they sure are fun to watch. One, one is high, two and one. Fastball, 91. Brand still with his velocity up to 95 on the outing today in terms of the pitch count. McIntyre over at first. That's the only base runner. One down at the top of the six. Brand about to deliver the 2 1 to Devine. High curveball that never really curved at 74, 3 and 1. Rain is, is over? I don't see any umbrellas. I don't either. That's good. All we need is another inning and a half. 3-1 to Devine as Brand take his time to get set. Here it is. It is a strike. Outside corner, 90 mile per hour fastball. Three two coming, Brand just holding there. It's McIntyre at first, check over, high throw, and a nice job by set to bring that down. Yeah, Morissette, really athletic, one of the more athletic players you'll see over at first base, and uh, showing his defensive value throughout this series so far. Three two coming into Vine, big pitch, one out in the sixth, here it is. Outside, ball four, they had McIntyre at first kind of stealing over there, but he'll go to second by default on the walk to Devine. Two on, one out, and it all comes here in the top of the sixth inning. And we're gonna get a meeting at the mound here. Is that Danny Hayden out there? I believe that's Matt Pass, or the uh, okay. pitching coach. But I'm not sure with those neck, neck yeah. ears, it's hard to tell. Forgot my glasses today, I beg your pardon. <laughs> so I believe we do have a pitching change here. Yep, Brand is handing the ball over to Red Hawks player that is number 30 and it is Jacob Webb the right-handed pitcher so Brand's day is done and what an outing for him 100 pitches on the dot 
and exits after allowing two hits, two runs, no errors through five and a third. Pitching change for Boxford as Webb coming into Pearl here for the Red Hawks. And a one run contest. This is Miami Baseball on Red Hawk Radio. Jacob Webb, number 30 in red for the Red Hawks, your new pitcher in the top of the sixth inning. 6'5", 246 senior at a nearby Fairborn, Ohio. And this season for Miami will be appearance number eight, one and zero record. He has one save, 19 and a third innings pitch, seven hits, two runs, two of them are earned, five walks, 29 strikeouts this season. Has allowed one extra base hit. Opponents are batting 111 against Webb. So he's the shutdown guy out of the pen for the Red Hawks. And they throw him in later in the game, the seven inning game it will be as we have played the doubleheader today. We're in the top of the six, one out for Western Michigan. There's two men on base. At first and second, McIntyre second, divided first. Adjakovic is the new hitter and he'll take the first one outside at 94 on the gun from Webb. Fastball, one and oh. And Webb started off his college career at St. Clair Community College. Am I correct that that's right down the road, right? It's in Dayton, yeah. <laughs> in the Dayton area. Fairborn is a Dayton suburb, too, where he is from. 1 0. Outside at 94 again, 2 0. And I've been hyping up your uh, Ohio geography knowledge on the past few broadcasts that you're not around, <laughs> so. You are proving me right. There it is. Two old pitch coming to Hadjikovic, their first baseman today for Western Michigan. Swing and a miss. Two and one. High fastball, 95. No one knows a lot about Ohio geography. It's uh, Chris Finnell. He does. I'll have to pick his brain to Cincinnati pro. native. 2 1 pitch. Low. 3 and 1. Fastball. That's him. The dirt and trouble here for Webb, who has begun the outing with three balls out of his first four pitches. And they haven't even been close. The strike was a ball, too, but it was swung and missed at by Hadjikovic. I'll put him out a little. And just wait till we play UB, LB, uh, University of Buffalo. I'll Your be, Bulls. Yep. I'll be <laughs> spouting out geography facts like no tomorrow. <laughs> 3 1 down Broadway, 3 and 2 as Sagi coach. The smart take there at 95 on the fastball. For those that don't know, Jack, a native of Orchard Park, New York, Buffalo suburb. I'll know some Western New York geography too this summer. That's right, oh, I'm Patrick. I'm going to be competing uh, with you. Traveling to Mansfield for a summer internship. This pitch was called off. I think Hadjikovic called time. 
So it was thrown by Webb, but umpire stepped out from behind the plate. Ajikovic will step in for the 3-2. You got McIntyre on second, Devine on first, one out in the top of the sixth inning. Western Michigan trying to close out this 3-2 lead of Miami right now in the sixth. Here comes the pitch, swing and a miss. They got him with a strikeout on the fastball, 96. Webb dug deep for that one. And Jacob Webb will retire. The hitter there, you got Swinehart coming up next with two outs here in the sixth. Need dozens or so of fans still sticking it out in this one as we near the 11 o'clock hour on the East Coast. Swinehart's first one. High fly ball. Right field, it's shallow. Coming in there for Miami is Massman. He'll make the catch. Almost in center field. And that will retire the side here in the sixth. The Broncos will strand two runners on base after a strong start to the inning. But Webb coming in to shut things down from the bullpen. Red Hawks will hit the bottom of the sixth, try to extend this 3 2 lead when we return. You're listening to Miami Baseball right here on Red Hawk Radio. Stone is in there for the first pitch at the bottom of the sixth inning for the Red Hawks. They lead Western Michigan three to two. And the first delivery from Will Mullen is taken outside for ball one at 84 miles per hour. So Mullen is back out there to begin work in this bottom of the sixth inning for Western Michigan. That was his fourth pitch of the outing. Next delivery swung on a missed down the middle at one and one. And we really kind of glossed over Mullins' uh, pretty, ridi uh, pretty ridiculously uh, unorthodox windup here. Yeah. Very heavy side armor, old time. Outside three and one. And he steps so far to his left, he almost falls off the mound. Bigger your pardon, still two and one actually to Stone. Mullen is low on the 2 1. 84 mile per hour fastball. His fastball has not as much velocity as we see some people throw in this level of baseball, but that sidearm kind of fools with you a little bit in terms of looking at the pitch when it comes in. 3 1 to Stone, the leadoff hitter in the bottom of the sixth. Outside draws the walk, and he's the first man on base for the Red Hawks in the inning. So Stone Massman. on base for the first time today. Parker Massman is up, number 27. He's going to bat in the cleanup spot. So his first appearance of the day is he came into right field a couple innings ago. 
Got Stone there on first. Nobody out in the bottom half of the six. 3-2 Miami. Side arm, the bunt is foul, third base side. That's been showing there before the pitch came in. 0-1 goes the count to Parker Matzman, and I wonder if they're gonna just have him doing that again, try to get the man over in this tight game in Nate Stone. Side armor Webb resets. Throws over to first, back safely. Is Stone. Passman shows butt, gets it down. Third baseman charging in. That would be Allen. Makes the throw. Bobbled by the first baseman, O'Keefe. And it's safe at first base. And the sack attempt is Massman. I'm going to guess that's an error. Nice job coming in by Allen. Great awareness from third. He charged in heavily to get that throw. And it would have been in time had O'Keefe not bobbled it at first base. Came out of his glove. E3 is the call, and that's the first Western error of the day. So reaching on the air is Massman for his first step bat, and Reddock's in two men on with nobody out here in the sixth. First pitch is a strike to Cole Andrews. You remember Andrews back in his last at bat had the two run shot to right in the fourth inning. And was what tied what was a Western 2 0 lead to a 2 2 tie back in the fourth. Reddock scored one in the fifth to make a 3 2 lead. Stone at second, Massman on first. Nobody out. A one pitch outside on the curveball at 73. And it's a one and one to count to Andrews. Also a fly out on the day for Andrews. One one coming for Mullen. Foul back to the screen, one and two. Mullen taking his time here on the rubber. One, two coming. Just outside, a little high. 76 curveball curve just outside of the zone on Andrews. Count moves to two and two. And they'll do it again. Stone on second, Massman at first for the Red Hawks. Nobody out in the sixth. 3-2 Miami leads it in this seven-inning affair. That's all they'll play tonight. Fell back to the screen on the 2-2. Fastball at 85. Count stays put. Andrews will throw it, swing and a miss, struck him out. Excuse me, Mullen threw it to Andrews, and Andrews swinging and missing for the strikeout. One down here in the sixth. Stoles the next hitter. We got a no hit bid in the MLB right now. That's right, Joe Musgrove of the Padres going for the franchise's first ever no-hitter. He is in the bottom of the ninth right now. Ooh. Three outs away. Which game are you watching more? Uh, <laughs> first pitch is a ball low. I'm just giving you a hard time. <laughs> Stone at second, Massman at first. Ball, 
Pitches fall back to the screen. Give him a check swing that time from Stoles. So he'll step in for the next one in this 1-1 one -one count. Two men on with one out here in the six. Stoles will wait the delivery for Mullen. Outside curve ball, two and one. Sorry, I've been looking over your shoulder too, so you can oh. ask that question to me. <laughs> Almost just got one into the outfield yeah. and broke it up. Two outs away now though for Musgrove. Two on to Stoles in this game. High drive, center field, sends Sharping in. He'll make the catch. They keep the runners at first and second clutch. Play there by Sharping, although he didn't have to do too much to catch that fly ball, but good break for Western Michigan, so he'll lock the runners at first and second. Now two down in the sixth. And you got the lefty Wardwell up next, the shortstop for Miami. So what can he do, if anything, here in the sixth? Only six hits between each team combined. Wardwell goes on the first one, little number that's fouled third base side, and it will be caught to end the inning by the third baseman, Allen. Great job by the Broncos to shut down the Red Hawks there, who threatened in the sixth. To the top of the seventh we go, Miami trying to win this one in game two of the doubleheader. 3-2 your score, you're listening to Miami Baseball on Red Hawk Radio. <laughs> Jimmy Allen leads things off for the Broncos here in the bottom half of the seventh inning. Or the top half of the seventh inning, rather. We just have a no-hitter in the MLB tonight. First pitch of this game in the seventh is outside. 1-0. Right, right as we came back, they yeah. finished it off. Joe Musgrove with the Padres. How about that? Is that the first one of the year? No-hitter? I believe it yeah. is. And now I can turn my attention back to the Miami baseball <laughs> game at hand. <laughs> that one inside. And the count moves to 2-0. and oh. So you have Allen, who's up. He's in the eighth spot. Budding is next up. Actually, got a pinch hitter in the odd deck circle, so hold that. You got the 8, 9, and 1 spots due up for Western Michigan in this inning, and the rain is continuing. Coming down again. After we had a break, 2-0 is down low, and it's 3-0. And you got the tying run, one ball away from reaching base. Taking his time is Jacob Webb on the mound about to deliver pitch number eight at the outing. And it's high. Four pitch walk to start the top of the seventh. Pinch hitters coming in for the Broncos. Pinch for Western and that is number 12, Gavin, 12 Doyle, Gavin Doyle, sophomore out of Plainfield, Illinois. 
So he'll replace Craig Budding here in the nine spot. Doyle this season for Western Michigan. Batting 267, shows point on the first pitch, it's a strike. Anyway, 0-1. First appearance of the weekend for Budding, or excuse me, for Gavin Doyle. Did appear in all three games last weekend against Akron where Western Michigan got the sweep. Bunny here is popped nearly over the protector. Then he behind the plate, got the top of the bat and it's 0-2. 93 on the gun that time from Webb, just tried to float it in there as fast as he could. Yeah, and a good job by Webb. High fastball is the hardest pitch to bunt, so. Uh... He certainly makes it hard on him. Yeah. 0-2 on its way with Allen over at first. He's a tying run. It's inside, gets away from Stoles, but he'll manage it and fire it back to the pitcher. And Webb. So the runner stays at first in Allen. Western Michigan won the first game of this doubleheader, nine to nothing. They trail three to two to Miami in game two in the top of the seventh. And again, we're only playing seven tonight with it being a double header. One, two on the way. Fouled back to the screen. It was an outside pitch at 80 miles per hour off speed from Webb. And Doyle, a great job to reach out for that one, get a piece of it with the end of the bat. One, two. Whoa, two and two. 94 on the gun. Good job by Doyle to fight. Swing and a miss on the 2-2 for Webb. 95 on the gun, Doyle behind it. Back to the top of the order we go. There's a one out in the top of the seventh and you still got Allen to tie and run over there at first. New hitter is Will Morrison. A pair of strikeouts and a sack bunt on the day for him. The right fielder today for Western Michigan or tonight. And he was four for five in game one so uh... Not a great game too, but certainly dangerous is Will Morrison. Pitch is up and in, one and oh. Off speed that time from Webb. A sharpening on deck for Western Michigan in the two spot. He struck out three times today. One oh, showing bunt. And that pitch was down and away. But Morrison didn't pull it back in time. It's a strike, one and one. That's a tough break. Yeah, and I'm not really sure I see the strategy uh, punting with the runner on first and one out your leadoff hitter at the plate. Guess, guess it's for a hit, must yep. be. One, one. Line, it is down for a fair ball. First base side in the outfield. Allen's gonna go to third base as they're just picking it up now. They'll stop him there. In with a stand up double is Morrison. And the Broncos knocking on the door with one out, down by one in the seventh. That was luck off the bat that time of Morrison as that ball just kind of nubbed out on the first base side. It landed right on the line, passed first base into the outfield. And kind of a poor spot for the Red Hawk defense to get to it quickly. They're on second and third with one out in the seventh and sharping to the plate. And what a weird game is baseball. Fist went out, pretty much hit anywhere else on the field, literally. And that one's <laughs> an out. Find some outfield grass, rolls around for a while. And runners on second and third, that's what you love about baseball. So the Broncos are in jeopardy this game of having their five game winning streak snapped. 
But uh, we'd like to continue that here and are threatening to do so. They're on second and third with one out at the top of the seventh. And again, if you're just joining us, only playing seven tonight because of the doubleheader. Got a meeting at the mound now for um, the Red Hot pitching staff. Looks like Webb's going to stay in there. As this pitch count up to 20. You got Allen on third, Morrison on second, one out in the seventh. New hitter is Sharping, who has struck out all three at bats today. You better be careful with what you say, Patrick. They'll send this one to extras. I'm stating facts. <laughs> I don't know if my voice could take extra innings tonight. <laughs> so Webb will step on the rubber, deliver the first pitch to Sharping. It is fouled off the catcher, actually the umpire, and out of play behind the plate. Went off the umpire's mask, and he seems to be okay. That's good. Had been to a long ring day. the old bell a little bit there. Though. Oh, yeah. Well, it's been a long day for those guys, too. Uh oh. Standing out in the rain. Absolutely. Dealing with the delays. Yeah, I'm sitting back here complaining, but I've been sitting under a tent yeah, all day. Yeah, we're dry. Been sharing our tent, too, with some of the Western fans, one and one. Their, their head coach's mom. Yeah, was standing been talking with us. To us. Very nice lady. Mm -hmm. Miami and Western Michigan, they're like sister schools. They're, they're mm -hmm. like the same thing. It's kind of unique. 1-1 one, one, line right up the middle. It's a base hit. Morrison coming in to score. Allen as well. Western Michigan 4, Miami 3 on a 2 RBI base hit from Sharping. Just like that, the Broncos on top. On a weak grounder that went over second base into center field. Their first lead since the fourth inning. Sharping with a clutch hit. I guess that's where they get that old adage of blooping a blast. Strike one of the new hitter in McIntyre. Reached on an error his last time up. And you still got Sharping at first base, one out in the seventh. Just like that, Western Michigan up four to three. Trying to keep that winning streak alive and steal this double header today. Next one inside, it's one and one. Webb's going to kind of step off the rubber here, take a look at his forearm. Reset. As Sharping takes the lead off over at first. 1-1 one, one delivery. Well, back to the screen, 1-2. and two. An off speed at 79. And McIntyre all over that, just got the wrong part of the bat on. Webb is really taking his time working here. One, two delivery to McIntyre with one out in the seventh. Hits him. Got him off the shoulder on the fastball at 93 and McIntyre just yelling at the dugout right now trying to get him fired up. They're on first and second with one out. There's still nobody up in the Red Hawk bullpen. And they are living or dying with Jacob Webb right yeah. here. He's their shutdown guy. Opponents were only batting 111 against him coming into this appearance today. And he did his job back in the six to leave a couple of Broncos stranded on base in that half of the inning. But this has been a completely different story in the top of the seventh in what is only going to be a seven inning game tonight, or at least that's what we plan on. So we're going to miss on the first offering to Sean O'Keefe, the cleanup man. He struck out twice today. Of course, he had Sharping, who I was saying multiple times, it struck out all three of his at-bats, and he's the one that could be the hero tonight. That's right. With a single up the middle for a couple of runs, scoring the tying and go-ahead run here in the seventh to make it four to three Broncos. Still on first and second, one out, curveball is outside. 
Makes a one and one on O'Keefe from Webb. And the umpire actually raised his hand to start to call that one a strike and then went and <laughs> adjusted his mask. But you could tell he thought, <laughs> thought very long and hard about calling that one a strike. The old trick. Yeah. Sharping on second. McIntyre on first. One out in the Western Michigan offensive half of the seventh. Another outside pitch from O'Keefe. And that time, no umpire would be mistakenly called out a strike. <laughs> That was in the other batter's box. Keep the righty steps in. Got Devine on deck. Here's the delivery. Another outside pitch, three and one. One pitch away from the bases being loaded is Webb and still nobody up in the red off bullpen. Wow. I, I don't know anything about baseball coaching, but. Yeah. I figure at this point you get the, the bases loaded. Huh? Yeah, it's it's an odd strategic move to say the least. So I'm gonna miss, it's three and two. I don't know if maybe they're trying to save the bullpen for tomorrow, but I mean, there's no yeah. guarantee we're gonna play tomorrow, no. so. That forecast does not look good either. He got a winnable game right here in front of you, so. Yep. Three and two to O'Keefe, here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Clutch strikeout from Jacob Webb. O'Keefe is down for two outs here in the seventh. And the new hitter is Drew Devine as O'Keefe, the cleanup man there, goes down on strikes. And that's a big one for Webb and his confidence. This will be his 34th pitch, the outing coming up. Still got Sharping at second, McIntyre on first. 4-3 Broncos lead it in the seven inning game in the top of the seventh. And stepping in here is Devine for his first offering from Webb. So I'm gonna miss, high fastball. Runners taking healthy leadoffs from their respective bases at first and second. Nobody worried about him. That's a fastball that nails the outside corner. 0-2, well placed at 93 on the gun. That time from Webb. It looks like they're telling Webb to just let his fastball eat. Yeah. Don't worry about throwing any breaking balls or fooling anybody. Just throw it out there, let him hit it. 0-2. High fastball, 91, didn't chase that time. So Webb will stare in again on the vine. One, two pitch coming here. Outside curveball, nice stop by Stoles. Runners stay at first and second to count to two and two with two outs in the top of the seventh. Four to three, Broncos lead it. Got the tying run and the go-ahead run when we started the top of the seventh. It was a 3-2 Miami lead. But Sharping with a two RBI single. A few minutes back. 2-2, two -two, got him looking, nice curveball at 81. And it ends the top of the seventh. Broncos lead it, they'll try to get the sweep of the doubleheader, and we go to the bottom of the seventh. Broncos up, four to three on the Red Hawks. We're back in a moment. This is Miami Baseball on Red Hawk Radio.
defensive changes for Western Michigan about to begin the bottom of the seventh inning. Patrick Eschen, Jack Schmelzinger with you here in Oxford on Red Hawk Radio as we're past the 11 o'clock hour now in the east. You got Blake Dunn at center field now for Western Michigan and Sharping their catcher. Connor Sharping is now behind the plate as the catcher. He was in center field, so he swaps with Dunn. Dunn was not catching, he's fresh in the game, but Sharping now behind the plate. Hitter for the Red Hawks. Yeah. Like I said, center fielder to catcher in the bottom of the seventh. What is theoretically our bottom of the ninth. Zap is in, the lefty will show Bunn on the first pitch and pull it back for ball one. You got Mullen still out there to try to save this bottom of the seventh inning and get Western Michigan the sweep in this doubleheader today and extend the Broncos winning streak to six. Pitches outside 2-0 on the 85 mile per hour fastball. Remember, Mullen is a sidearm pitcher, righty, and his fastball is in the mid 80s. So and probably has a lot of movement on it, but uh, yep. to a lefty, that thing might look like a beach ball if he throws in the right place. 2-0 pitch, down the middle, four strike one at 86. So Zap is the eighth spot today. More is set than nine hitter. Benji Brokemont is also due up in the one spot. Maybe pinch hitters, but it's the eight, nine, and one spot due up. Two, one, down the middle. No. They say low, three and one. Check swing that time from Zap, but he pulled it back. And the count three balls and one strike to him. A lot of side, uh, arm side tail from the sidewinder, so that one just pulled a little bit outside at the very last second. 3-1 is low. It's a first batter leadoff walk for the Red Hawks. Here in the bottom of the seventh. So Zap to first. He's the tying run with nobody out in the bottom of the seventh in this 4-3 game that the Red Hawks trail. And you got the new hitter coming up for the Red Hawks in Morissette. He will take the plate, but a meeting at the mound for the Broncos. We're gonna have a new pitcher coming in, yep. As it looks like Mullins' night is done. So Mullen will exit, and the new man for the Broncos is going to be number 23. His name is Ryan Watt, the righty at 6'2", 235, a freshman out of South Bend, Indiana. So he'll come in and pitch. Try to save this one for the Broncos at the bottom of the seventh. Red Hawks threatened with a tying run on base. Nobody out here in the final inning, or will it be? 4-3, the Broncos lead it. We're back in a moment. This is Miami Baseball on Red Hawk Radio. Ryan Watt, the new pitcher for Western Michigan. Patrick Eschen, Jack Schmelzinger back with you here in Oxford. Hitter for Miami is Michael Morris set. Watt this season making appearance number nine, 16 and two thirds. He did appear in the first game, pitched two innings in the win for the Broncos. First one is outside, one to know the count to Morris set. 
And in those two innings earlier today, two strikeouts for Watt. He was excellent. Still got a man on first. Bunt is popped up and caught by the catcher. Morris set, can't get it down. One out in the seventh. And it keeps Zapp at first base. The tying run. Benji Brokemont to the plate for Miami. He's the leadoff hitter. Does have a hit today. Let me stare down here by Ryan Watt. Again, Zapp at first, one out in the Miami bottom of the seventh inning. And Watt will step off the rubber here. We are only playing seven innings if you're just joining us, so this is theoretically the bottom half of the ninth. Rocks trail by one, tying run on first with the one out. Here's the pitch, outside, low. 84 on the gun, it's one and oh to broke on. It is a winnable game for the Red Hawks who did lead at the start of the last half inning, the top of the seventh. They were up three to two, but Western Michigan with a two RBI single to take the lead in that last half inning. 1-0, fouled back behind us, one and one. Into the parking lot behind the field. The lineup stays, you got Vogel saying up next. Or no, it's gonna be back, it looks like, as they have him on deck. We'll check on that. 1-1, one, one, low, 2-1, curveball at 77 is in the dirt. It's supposed to be Vogel saying. Hmm. Our staff program is uh, yeah, acting a little funny. It's tripping out on us. Should be Vogel saying though. Time is called by Brokemont in the batter's box prior to the 2 1 pitch. Zap taking a small lead off at first. Being conservative here. 2 1. Chop foul behind the plate. 2 and 2. He was ahead of that one at 77. What do you think? Ryan Watt's going to deliver here on the 2 2. That's a good question. Early on the Early on the uh, breaking ball, I would throw another one here. Excited to see what the Western Michigan coaches think, though. 2-2 two -two on the way to Brokemont, one out. Blow it away, 76. So another off speed, but this time Brokemont watching it go by for a full count now. Can hear the few fans lingering here in McKee Field, Hayden Park. In the late part of this Friday night, Brokemont fouls this one, foul territory, first base side. Western players gonna run out of room, that's in their bullpen. Count stays full. He had an army of black jerseys going over there trying to sneak that ball down and foul territory, but it was 15 feet deep into the bullpen, easily inaccessible. The Brokemont faces the 3 2 of the man on first, one out in the seventh. The Red Hawks trail by one. Here it comes from Watt inside ball four. And they're on first and second as that one almost hit Brokemont. And it is, in fact, Will Vogel saying two of the plate for the Red Hawks. So the stats program is tripping out on us. He is, in fact, the next hitter. And we'll arrive to the plate here with Zap on second, Brokemont on first. One out in the bottom of the seventh. Red Hawks down by one. And this is our theoretical bottom half of the ninth as we're only playing nine innings tonight. And no one the Red Hawks would rather have up in this spot than Will Vogel saying the graduate student, a wily veteran, and has come up clutch multiple times this season already. First pitch, he swings on, popped up. Shallow part of the right field area and it's caught by the second baseman, McIntyre. So Vogel saying Phil confident there, jumped on the first pitch. But he got a little fly out on a blooper. 
So now you have two outs. First and second are the runners. In this 4-3 game for Miami down to their final out and Nate still on the left-handed batter in the third spot tonight. We'll try to make some magic happen here. It'll take just a hit in the outfield to tie this game up. Watt looking in will set up for the delivery. First offering to Stone. Strike one. 78 on the curveball down the middle. Healthy leadoffs by both runners at first and second, respectively. Nobody's worrying about them. A one coming to Stone. Two outs here in the seventh. Line, right side, it will be a foul ball in the outfield. That was probably three feet away from the line, just on the wrong side of it, down that first base side. Three feet away from winning this game, I think, with the speedy Benji broke him on first base. So returning to the batter's box for the 0-2 to Stone. Red Hawks to their final strike. Western Michigan trying to extend the winning streak to six games. And sweep the doubleheader today. Noise coming from the fans and the players here at McKee Field. 0-2 from Stone. Gets it off. Nope, we'll step off the rubber. Long pause there. And Stone was the one to step down for the pressure. He'll get back on the rubber here. Would zap it second, broke on at first, bottom of the seventh, two outs, 0 and 2 count, 4 3 Red Ox trail. Here's the pitch. Outside, just missed the corner on the fastball. It's 86. 1 and 2. Stone sets up. Watt does too. Watt's delivery on the one two pitch. High. Two and two. 87 on the gun. Stone fighting to the last breath here for the Red Hawks. A base hit could tie it up. They're on first and second with two out. Here comes Watts, 2-2. Two, two. Swing and a miss, 79 mile per hour curveball. This one's over. The Western Michigan Broncos winning streak to six. And they beat the Miami Red Hawks in a clutch come from behind fashion, four to three on a rain delayed Friday night affair here in Oxford. And the Broncos start this series off with a bang as they sweep the opening doubleheader against the Red Hawks, who are the Max first place team. Two big wins by the Broncos today, and this one especially, Jack, closed out in quite a fashion by Western Michigan. Yeah, and a, a really good game from both teams. Uh, and just impressive to see Western Michigan come out on top. Impressive to see that battle to the last breath. Really good pitching from Ryan Watt, second game in a row that he closes out. And uh, excited to see where this one goes tomorrow. In a game that lasted two hours and 25 minutes, Western Michigan improves to nine and 11 overall, nine and five in the MAC, where they came into the day in fourth place in the conference. And the winning streak grows to six for the Broncos. They're now three and nine away from Kalamazoo. Red Hawks fall to 17 and 10 overall. Now 10 and three in the MAC. The winning streak for the Red Hawks that was at four games to start today as snaps. Now a two game losing streak for Miami. And they are now six and three here at McKee Field at Hayden Park. Player of the game for sure by Western Michigan will be Connor Sharping and that clutch single up the middle in the top of the seventh inning to score a couple of runs that gave Western Michigan the four three lead. And Sharping, for sure, the hero tonight for the men from Kalamazoo as they will come back and play tomorrow. We hope they'll get the game in 
as uh, Chris Vanell and Jack Chappelle is here. We'll call it for you tomorrow right back here on the Red Hawk Radio YouTube, the same YouTube channel you found this game on. Just come back tomorrow at 1 o'clock Eastern time for game three of the series between Western Michigan and Miami. We're back on Sunday as well for game four of the series too. So your final tonight, Western Michigan four, Miami three. Broncos sweep the day here in Oxford. We're back for game three of the series tomorrow at 1. For Jack Schmelzinger, rest of our great Red Hawk Radio crew, Patrick Eshin saying so long. Good night from a key field at Hayden Park. Broncos winners tonight. We hope you have a great night, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to this presentation of Miami Baseball on Red Hawk Radio.